developed in 1981 by Commodore Business Machines. The VIC-1010 is an expansion module which allows up to six VIC-20 cartridges to be inserted at the same time, such as additional RAM, utilities and games. Although it originally came with cartridge covers for unused slots, these have been lost to time. So let's open it up, give it a clean, restore those slot covers and discover how this VIC 1010 works. On the base of the VIC 1010, there are six screws we need to remove to gain access to the internal circuit board and the power supply. Upon lifting the lid, we can see the circuit board and the cartridge interfaces and the power supply on the right hand side. A closer look identifies from what's called the DC pack, a power connection to the circuit board and a return one from the circuit board to the VIC 1010 power light. To examine the power supply, there are four screws on the power supply case and an additional four securing it to the VIC 1010's base. Upon opening the power supply, all of the components seem to be in good shape. However, I was interested to see the plastic plate glued to the top of the dark blue capacitor as maybe a safety precaution in the event of its failure. Removing the circuit board from the VIC 1010 base, a closer inspection identifies the words motherboard, a 1010-010 reference, Commodore and the date 1981, which could support the development life cycle in line with this 8K cartridge RAM documentation advising the VIC 1010 will be available from mid-1982. Having cleaned the circuit board with rubbing alcohol and the interface connectors, it was time to reassemble the components of this VIC 1010, starting off with the internal circuit board and the power supply and all of the necessary connections. Having managed to acquire an original VIC-1010 cartridge slot cover, using FreeCAD I attempted to copy the original design. As we can see, my first iterations were too thick and too long until I realised if you 3D printed them on their sides, this increased the resolution and thus the quality of the prints. Having gone through a number of versions with this 3D print and spraying them a near almond colour, I was pleased to achieve the following. So now we're ready to attach the VIC 1010 to the VIC 20. A 
and let's install some additional cartridge RAM. So we've got a 3K, an 8K, 16K. Another 16K. And yet another 16K, which is 59K. And plus the 5K from the VIC-20 is overall 64K. So let's check using a program I've written to see how much RAM we've got. So um, wait on, that's not right. RAM on the VIC-20 is managed using blocks 0 to 5. Each block has their own characteristics. So block 0 is 3K cartridge RAM only. Blocks 1, 2, 3 and 5 are compatible with 8K cartridges. Whereas blocks 1 and 2 combined are compatible with the 16K cartridge RAM. Blocks 3 and 5 also have opportunities for 4K cartridge ROMs and for this reason I'll be monitoring every 4K blocks using the basic program I've written which pokes a zero in the memory location and tests for it thereafter. And this is why we didn't have the full expected complement of RAM because we had multiple cartridges conflicting the same RAM space. Plugging in a 3K cartridge RAM and loading up the Memcheck basic program shows that block zero has enabled RAM. And moving that 3K cartridge to a different slot produces the same result. This also adds 3K of RAM to basic by relocating the start of basic in line with the 3K cartridge RAM which results in the increase from 3583 to 6655 bytes free. Plugging in an 8K RAM cartridge has the expected result. However, looking closer, we can see this 8K of RAM has been appended to the end of BASIC, which results in a greater increase from 3583 to 11775 bytes free. Referring back to the RAM cartridge instructions, we can see on the second page here, there's a list of dip switches which allow us to change the start of the 8K RAM cartridge. So let's open it up, change some of these settings and see what happens. Selecting DIN switch 3 moves the 8K of RAM to 16384. Pin 2 to 24576. And pin 1 to 40960. But that's not all, because when we moved the 8K cartridge RAM to 16384, it became non contiguous with basic RAM leaving BASIC back with 3583 bytes free. Dip switch 2 moved our 8K cartridge ROM down to the first set of 4K cartridge ROMs and dip switch 1 to the second pair of cartridge ROMs in high memory. And finally, when we slot in a 16K ROM cartridge, again, we've got what we expect However, because this becomes contiguous basic RAM, this increases from 3583 to a massive 19967 bytes free. And for completeness, inserting a 16K switched RAM pack shows no additional RAM. Switching to the left hand side provides an additional 3K and to the right 
an additional 16K like we've seen before. However, what's interesting with regards to the dynamic switching of RAM is that BASIC maintains its integrity even when not powered off between the three different settings. Now we've identified the characteristics of memory and each of the RAM cartridges using the VIC 1010, it's now time to put them all together to max out the RAM on this VIC 20. Having confirmed, we've enabled the 3K, the 16K and the 8K cartridge RAM. Although we have an additional 24K of contiguous basic RAM, we seem to have lost the 3K basic RAM in lower memory, which has resulted in 28159 basic bytes free. And configuring an additional 8K RAM cartridge for high memory, as this RAM is non contiguous, it remains non basic RAM, which means we appear to have reached the limit of the number of bytes free for BASIC. So let's check out all of the unique RAM configurations we can have on a VIC-20 using the VIC-1010. As we can see, there are 32 unique RAM configurations, including no expansion right through to an additional 35K. From all of those configurations, there's actually only 10 unique RAM expansion sizes, highlighted here in yellow, available to the VIG-20. And of those, there's only 5 unique basic RAM sizes, again highlighted here in yellow, available to the VIG-20. And for completeness, this modern day multifunctional penultimate plus cartridge also provides the ability to expand the RAM on your VIG-20. So pressing F5 for an additional 35K and running the Memchat program shows we have the full complement of expandable RAM for the VIG-20. Reviewing the VIG 1010's user manual. It has a number of sections including introduction, connection, closing power switch and system memory map. Which is quite interesting because on the next page it talks about use cases for utilities. Such as an assembly monitor, a programmer's aid, a super expander and an IEEE interface cartridge. So let's dig into what we have available and have a look at these utility ROM packs. So first up is Super Expander and it's a high resolution graphics pack with commands such as paint, draw, circle, color, point and many, many more. Remember, this is 1981. Next up is the Machine Code Monitor or VicMon, which provides a number of assembly commands such as assembly, disassembly, breakpoints, go, hunt, interpret, jump, and load. Although considered a weaker toolkit than the ones we've already talked about, the programmer's aid supported basic programmers with a number of quite interesting commands. So using our memcheck basic program as the example here and typing the command step allows you to debug your basic program. Having run the program it will only execute the next line of basic code when the shift key is pressed and on the top right hand corner we can see the line number which is really handy if you're stuck. Another notable command within the programmer's aid was 
renumber, which reorganized the line numbers and any basic command referencing that line number as per the increment defined, in this case, 10. And the final utility ROM pack is the IEEE 488 interface cartridge, which was the international standard for parallel interfaces and connected to peripherals such as this Commodore Model 440 dual drive floppy disk. However, Commodore flattened one end of the IEEE 488 cabling to fit the Commodore PET and thus the IEEE 488 interface cartridge. Whereas on the other side, we have an appropriate IEEE 488 standard connector, which we plug securely into the back of the floppy disk drive. And although we don't have one of these cartridges, we can set up an 8K RAM cartridge and software load the IEEE for double eight utility ROM pack. And with all this experience, it's now time to load up the VIC 1010 with an additional 35K of RAM to load up and play this recent VIC 20 title called Help Bodge. So please join me in loading this game to enjoy the wonders of an expanded VIC-20.